We recently visited Japan, which continues to be for us one of the most unique countries in the world. Tokyo was just named the safest city in the world and certainly is the cleanest and most polite. The Japanese people and their culture and Japan's important role in the world cannot be ignored. Over the last few weeks, we've explored Japan's plans for revitalizing its economy, its world leadership in technology, and its vast and intriguing cultural depth. On this program, we'll look at how Japan is welcoming the world. We'll visit Kobe, Japan's sixth largest city, a truly international city with a historic past of inclusion. We'll also introduce a thriving center of education and diversity, where half of the student body is from Japan and the other half from 79 countries throughout the world. It's called Asia Pacific University. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S. China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. At Asia Pacific University, APU, classes are taught in both Japanese and English, and the students who attend APU are exceptional in so many different ways. One of APU's vice presidents and faculty members, Ed Porter, offers some background. I saw that this idea of bringing together half your student body from overseas, half from Japan, teaching almost every course in two languages. Students choose which language. Having professors who come here from all over the world to interact, it's really this, um, it's like this global village on top of this mountain here. The international students are taking a chance. I mean, a lot of them are coming from cultures where name brand universities or where their parents want them to go, where their schools want them to go. And uh, they've taken a chance to come here, in the early years especially, to be part of this, to participate in this environment. And so they, they're quite brave, uh, those who came here. So they are cut from a different cloth because they, a lot of them went against their parents. All over Asia, of course, students are also prepped to go for the big name universities either domestically or internationally. So they're, they are brave, uh, the ones who come here. The Japanese students are also quite brave. This is not the first choice for a lot of parents, at least in the early years. What kind of job could they get? What's the reputation of the university? So uh, the Japanese students were also quite unique and are also quite unique who come here. It's quite a challenge. They have to study English. They have to get their English up. Um, they can take most of their courses in Japanese, but by the time they graduate, they have to be studying also in English. So they're, they create um, yeah, a wonderful, diverse, intercultural, global community here. When our students graduate from here, most of them are trilingual. Mm -hmm. They have their home language. They have English. They have Japanese. And while they're here, they may study Chinese. They may study Spanish. So that's immediately attractive to employers. And they're also multicultural, and it shows very quickly in their interaction. So that's what we're really proud of. 
At APU, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with some of the students and professors. Actually, in APU, they really support uh, such kind of extracurricular activities. Oh, good. Whenever we pull out a project and we propose, and APU is going to support us. I did my undergraduate studies at uh, St. Edward's University in Austin. Okay. And um, at that time, uh, my university was developing a program with APU, um, which now I think has evolved into a dual degree program. Uh -huh. um, so I came here, I did my master's program. Uh, my master's studies here. I graduated, went and worked in Washington for about three years. I'm the sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and ahead. then I decided to come back. Decided to come back and do a PhD. So now I'm, I'm here. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be teaching uh, once I finish this. How's your Japanese? It's. Uh, it, it deteriorated when I was in Washington. Oh. Um, but we all do. It's, it's, it's coming, <laughs> <laughs> but it's coming back. It's coming back. Um, Good for you. The, the uh, community here in Beppu is uh, very engaging, and uh -huh. there's a lot of opportunity to, to speak with with students and with people uh -huh. um, down downtown. So how would you how would you use the degree, the PhD? How would you? Well, I'd like I'd like to teach at a university, uh -huh. potentially here in Japan. Yeah. Especially in APU, you find a lot of unique people actually. Like everyone has their own background story, yeah. and you yeah. meet like a lot of people. Like for example, I have friends like who are from Mozambique, but like lived in Malaysia and Indonesia, uh -huh. you know. And I have like friends like from also America who live in Thailand, mm -hmm. and and also lived like a, a portion in Japan and things like that. So I think APU gives like um, the opportunity to meet those people, and then have a connection to them. Mm -hmm. And it shows also how the world is actually globalizing and how smaller the world becomes. Yeah. So, um, I say that the role of us, university, is to provide opportunities for students so that they can, um, can I say, exercise their full potentials. Um, I, I don't want them to stay like passive students, mm -hmm. just, you know, listening and absorbing information, but they have capacity to influence other people and educate other people. Uh, so the I best way to teach, uh, I think, especially undergraduates, is to give them that space where they can learn together and they can learn how to be responsible. Wonderful. And I think that's the key point at APU, because these students are smarter than I am. <laughs> All we can do is put them together and let them work. University President Karanaga Shun explains how the local area and the school both benefit. Our educational philosophy is that the diversity brings about creativity. Hmm. Diversity brings about this uh, critical thinking. Our campus is unique. It's an unrivaled Japan, this diverse campus. So how does it work with the school and the community yes. and the community and the school? Uh, basically, uh, we have already already concluded this agreement with uh, this uh, hold uh, municipalities in Oita Prefecture. Oita Prefecture has uh, this uh, 19 municipalities, cities, towns, and village. Approximately 800 to 900 students uh, attend this uh, various activities in town, the cities, and village. For example, that they attend this uh, to teach English in junior high school, and uh, to attend uh, this uh, Japanese traditional festivals, and so on. Some faculty members uh, will also attend uh, these official committees in cities, town, and village. For example, this uh, to apply uh, world heritage, to apply world agricultural heritage, and so on. Several years ago, I remember that uh, this uh, Oita Prefecture uh, investigating team of Oita Prefecture this, uh, uh, published a report of uh, this uh, economic ripple effect of APU. And uh, they reached the conclusion that uh, this uh, APU produced US dollar uh, two billion economic effect every year. Both sides get benefit of the existence of this university. Mm -hmm. mm. So, do the, some of the uh, the young people from the uh, towns and cities come yes. to the university? Yes, 
uh, almost every day visited uh, this um, student's uh, primary school, junior high school, visited this campus. Ah. And uh, this uh, um, meet uh, with the internet student. Vice President and faculty member Francisco Felizar suggests how APU's graduates have a ripple effect around the world. When we talk about regional development, mm -hmm. how does the university fit into that concept of regional development? Well, actually, in fact, it's a good question because APU is basically the response of the Japanese government and also the Rich Macon Trust to spur regional development in Asia Pacific because they saw that Asia Pacific is the seat of economic power. It has the strongest economies in the world, at least right now, and uh, it has also vast resources. It has uh, people also, the society is in contrast. It's a, it has rich societies and poor societies. And therefore, the, the idea of regional development is to even up the development of the rich and the poor. And APU basically is a response to this. We want APU to play a part in help eradicate poverty, uh, elevate poverty, at the same time develop good relationship between the rich and poor countries. And through mutual cooperation, regional development can be uh, realized. How does a university help eradicate the inequality between wealthy and poor? Okay, it's a long process though, but one thing there is of course human resources is very important. So when we develop qualified, competent students, then they go back to their country, engage in productive enterprise, take leadership in government and non-governmental organization, then we can help spur the economy. We are able to help organizations to become more effective mm. and responsive to the needs of their particular countries. How do the students uh, relate on a social level with the different cultures, just on a human level? You know, not so much for learning, 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 but just as people, huh? Oh, well, this is one feature of this university. Every semester, we have what we call a cultural week celebration. And this is where for the whole week, one country would showcase their culture, their food, their tradition. And at the end of the week, on a Friday, they would come up with a cultural presentation, music, dance, drama. The second one, um, facility that we have here that makes APU unique is our dormitory where the foreign students and Japanese students would live together. They will cook together, eat together, and join extracurricular activities together such as music, dance, sports, athletics, and so on. And uh, this works very well. For the past 12 years I've been here, we never had any conflict. We didn't have any quarrels, some petty things, but not serious quarrels among country, among students from different countries. And for me, this is really amazing. There's that cultural tolerance and appreciation of each other's culture. So no big political battles no. or religious battles no. or social battles? No, no, no. And I think this is one of the outstanding features of our graduates being able to appreciate its others, other people's culture and being able to work together. Kobe's unique location contributes to its reputation as being Japan's international city. As one of Japan's major seaports, Kobe has been welcoming its multicultural population for years. And today, Kobe hosts more than 100 international companies. In fact, some parts of the city make you question being in Japan at all. I sat down with the mayor of Kobe. Kobe, 
What makes Kobe so special and so unique? Kobe is a port city open to the rest of the world. And through that uh, port, uh, we have introduced uh, many foreign cultures uh, to the rest of Japan. Through Kobe, it got a lot of influence uh, from many different ethnicities and many different cultures and uh, customs of the world and also different religions. And this is actually the city that realized multiculturalism, even uh, before the, the war. Uh, we have gone through the Second World War, and during that time, there was a very strict restrictions of the freedom of speech. And those days, the social structure of Japan was quite rigid. However, in Kobe, we had a very different atmosphere and people from a uh, different uh, background uh, lived peacefully together and during that time uh, we realized a multiculturalism uh, in Japan. Kobe uh, was a place people uh, lived uh, quite peacefully. For many years uh, Kobe welcomed people uh, from a different uh, re religious backgrounds. So compared with other areas of Japan the uh, percentage of Asian people were uh, quite high and of course, in other uh, areas of Japan, the percentage of Chinese and Korean residents are high, but uh, those uh, people from ethnic, different ethnic backgrounds have come to Kobe and established their life, and then they were heavily involved in the business uh, in Kobe. What's the population of Kobe? 1.53 million. So including Tokyo, and uh, Kobe ranks the sixth largest city in Japan. What do people uh, today do in Kobe? Kobe has a long history as a manufacturing town and so we were well known as the town uh, where shipbuilding and steel making uh, were quite uh, prosperous. And so because of that Kobe played a very important role and in addition uh, Kobe is uh, a home to many pharmaceutical uh, companies and Kobe is now promoting itself as a healthcare city. This is the 20th anniversary of a huge earthquake here. No one would ever imagine that 20 years ago that the city was leveled. Uh, marvelous reconstruction in a very short period of time, huh? So this. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, the city of Kobe uh, was reconstructed at a remarkable speed. How about Kobe in the future? So Kobe has just passed the 20 year mark after the major disaster. So it is uh, time for us to go to the next stage. And the key to the next stage for Kobe uh, will uh, to be to develop uh, the biomedical cluster uh, even further. We would like to accelerate uh, research and development activities in Kobe and even advance uh, some uh, technologies uh, which are developed in uh, Kobe. And those findings uh, will be reflected in the new drugs or pharmaceutical products, which will uh, provide uh, uh, the uh, benefits uh, to, uh, to the, the health and welfare of the people. We have three key things uh, through which uh, we can make positive contribution to the world. Safety, uh, health and wellness, and disaster reduction. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has placed women front and center in his social and economic revitalization plans. Not only more women in the workforce, but more women in important positions. Kobe has taken a leading role in that regard with its city spokesperson. <laughs> spokesperson for Kobe City. How does that feel? First of all, I feel the heavy responsibility uh, of uh, my role uh, as the, the, the officer. I have to represent the city uh, to communicate uh, to the citizens and the media people. And so in doing so, I try to use my own language and secondly, while the mayor is responsible uh, for uh, explaining uh, the city's policies and some of the projects, and I am responsible uh, for introducing uh, some citizens of Kobe and those who are quite active uh, in Kobe. 
For example, there are uh, citizens uh, who are making positive contribution to the industries uh, of uh, the city and those who are engaged in community services in such areas as disaster management and education. So I would like to introduce uh, those citizens who are active uh, in their own field. The uh, mayor has uh, proudly announced uh, your appointment. How long ago did that happen? A little over one year ago, I was appointed as the communication officer. What has been the best part of the job? Since uh, the great uh, Hanshin Awaji earthquake in 1995, people in Kobe uh, have been helping each other uh, in their effort to rebuild uh, the city. Would you say the city has been totally rebuilt or is it still in the process of being rebuilt? When you look at the city and so you can see that the streets have become very beautiful, uh, but there are still people who have very uh, deep scars in their mind, and also there are people who have difficulty recovering their livelihood. Does it help uh, as the spokesperson or the press secretary for the mayor uh, that you are a woman? <laughs> that is a difficult question. However, uh, when I interview people, the uh, interviewee could be uh, both male and female interviewees, and sometimes I feel that uh, people uh, feel easy to relate to me because I am a woman. Half the population uh, uh, of the world uh, is uh, women, so it is natural uh, for women to be given uh, the same uh, amount of opportunities. and so that uh, they can have uh, the uh, occupations uh, of uh, their choice and use their own language uh, to be active in the society. Although uh, women have many different tasks, uh, such as uh, giving uh, childbirth and rearing children, so compared with men, the time she can allocate for uh, her work may be uh, limited. However, I think it is quite important for the society to allow women to continue uh, to stay on their jobs by balancing work and life. And actually, there are many women who have been able to balance the work and uh, family life, and I hope many more women in the future uh, may uh, do so. So our television program comes to Kobe. What do you, as the press secretary or the communications officer, what would you like people in America and around the world to know about Kobe? What would you say? Many overseas guests they'll think of Kobe beef when they hear about Kobe. Of course, uh, beef is a, one of the very important attractions of Kobe. However, uh, there are many other attractions of Kobe, uh, such as uh, the rich natural environment, the industries, and also uh, the rich culture that we have acquired. And I would also like to uh, de deliver uh, the message uh, of Kobe, uh, because after the uh, uh, Hanshin Awaji earthquake, uh, people of Kobe have nurtured the spirit of uh, mutual help. So this is a very important spirit which we would like to share with the rest of the world. Do tourists come to Kobe? Yes. What would be a few things you would want them to see or experience in Kobe? And one of the attractions of Kobe is that we have both the waterfront and the mountains. The view of the Kobe area overlooking from the mountainside is great, especially the night view. So please enjoy that. For a quick visit to the international city of Kobe or enrolling at Asia Pacific University for a degree, Japan's doors are open for short-term tourists and long-term visitors, all of whom can experience openness and diversity in Japan.
For information about This Is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S. China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services.